It's 106.7 K-Rock, KRQ. We're at the Coachella House. Are you guys good that are in front of me? This threesome sitting on stage has never happened. Normally there's me and the three of you, me and the two of you. But today when you have Dominic and Chris from Muse, I get very excited. Please welcome two of the guys from Muse here. Yeah. Dominic and Chris. Yeah. How are you, Dominic? <laughs> I'm doing great. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. This is awesome. Um, what a party. You're headlining uh, Coachella tomorrow night, but recently you played uh, Lollapalooza in Brazil. There's like 80 to 100,000 there. The Rome Olympic Stadium a while ago, which was huge. Oh, so, yeah. uh, Chris, this is probably sitting here more nerve wracking than that, I would assume. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it might be actually. Yeah. <laughs> well, because we're so close to everybody. Yeah, exactly. All right. So close. And it's light. Yeah, I can see everyone. Well, at least we're wearing shades. <laughs> Takes the edge off. There you go. It's kind of like a fishbowl. Last night, uh, Nirvana was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and when you guys, when you guys played uh, Lollapalooza, you played a Nirvana song. Mm. So, Dominic, I would like to know, are they an influence musically, or what were they to you uh, growing up? What was their music like for you? If you could just talk about that for a minute. And why did you play the Nirvana song? Um, yeah, they were like massively influence, uh, influential to us when we were growing up. I mean, we, uh, you know, they're one of the reasons we probably picked up some instruments and decided to start a band in the first place. And I think for many other people, many millions of people, you know, they were influential to, uh, you know, pick up an instrument and start a band. But um, yeah, we all loved them. You know, it was a band all three of us loved and probably in many ways it was that kind of music and some other bands that kind of brought us together and... You know, we almost became friends because of that. Mm. Um, it, was, it was those songs that we used to play when we were in bands when we were, you know, 12, 13 at school. You know, we, I think your band did lithium. Tried. Yeah. <laughs> like we tried to do the other night. <laughs> but it was actually, oh no, we, we did a gig in Brazil on, it was the 20th anniversary of his death on the 5th of April, I think. Um, so yeah, we played lithium or tried to play lithium. <laughs> and you but did a good job. Yeah, it, was, job. it was all right. It was fun to play. It definitely reminded me of like being... 12 again in my <laughs> first band and like you know playing at some kind of weird um, friends party or something do you think if they put out music right now fresh music no one heard of them it would be just as successful in 2014 Chris? yeah i do yeah i mean when you listen to Nevermind, it still sounds current you know i think i think when you compare it to rock bands that are around now it, it's not out of place at all you know and how did you get the music where and where were you living in 1991 92 93 94 uh, we were in timoth i mean we was we were still at school in okay. those days you know so but yeah i mean it was it was massive for us you know i think it, it just changed the whole the whole music scene i mean in england at the time rave was big you know so nirvana right. came along and just changed everything and i think all of a sudden made the guitar cool again you know which is why so many bands popped up around that time uh, before I showed up to the K-Rock Coachella house, I was blasting Muse in my hotel room. I was listening through my laptop. Take a Bow came on and Newborn came on. Oh. And I just love those songs. I love the build of those songs. Those things excite me, those two particular songs. And I'm just curious. I want to nerd out for a minute here with you. What do you remember when you recorded Take a Bow? That's a long, uh, well, not that long ago, but kind of a long time ago at this point. Um, that song in particular. Shit, where were we? In the south of France? Yeah. Probably started it. We started it in the south of France with some studio down there um, on a big vineyard. It was amazing, beautiful. But um, I think I remember like literally farting around with those synth sounds <laughs> for days, weeks, probably. <laughs> right. You know, all that kind of arpeggiated synth at the beginning. Um, I think, yeah, it just, you know, it took a while to kind of find, you know, piece, almost piece that song together, you know, before we could actually play it and figure out what we were doing with it you know it was uh took a while took a while what? it took a while to do the drums <laughs> <laughs> yeah that I drummer the that drummer and muse i mean <laughs> come on now all right and chris i want to ask you about newborn that's a song the first time i heard it years and years and years ago i'm like wow this band is huge but at the time mm. not that many people especially in la or the u.s knew of the band but that song when i when i listened back to it i'm like it's a no-brainer. Mm. Wow, these guys are incredible. What do you remember about making music then and maybe that song in well, particular? Well, that song was actually written in the States, wasn't it? Because we were on tour with the Chili Peppers at the time. I think really? it was the first proper tour that we did in America. So it was you and the Chili Peppers on the road? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, uh, and that riff was just hanging around at the time, and I think we, <laughs> we were just playing it in sound checks the whole of that tour. And uh, I think shortly after, we went into the studio and turned it into a song. But, yeah, that's probably why it's got that kind of slightly american vibe you know because it does probably yeah one of the first songs that kind <coughs> of turned us into more of a rock band than i suppose a bit of an indie band which we were on on the 
first album. You know, I think that, you know, going into uh, Origin Symmetry, we really changed the way we kind of play live and performed mm. and, and certainly became a lot heavier. And that song, I think, was a catalyst for that. And of course, Showbiz is a great record as well. I just want to get back to the Chili Peppers tour. Uh, Dominic, what do you remember from that? And were they nice to you? Did they even speak to you? Did they have socks on their private parts? Did they, like, what, what the hell happened? Or were they jerk? I don't know anything. What, what happened? Uh, they were great. It was us, the Foo Fighters, and the Chili Peppers. And it was, you know, really surreal. I mean, that sounds like a pretty good tour, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty and, good. Uh, you know, we were like young, 20. It was one of the first times we'd come over to the States. And it was, and we were used to playing in like tiny pubs in front of, you know, 25 people. And all of a sudden we were in arenas. So we kind of, you know, were crapping ourselves, really. It was all very surreal. But I think we, they were great guys. You know, we, they were all very friendly. You know, we went out and, uh, a few nights and went to some bars and nice. got, got drunk and right. stuff. <laughs> and, uh, That's what you do. And I think tried to sing karaoke one night. Really? Do you yeah. remember what song you sang? Was it like Living on a Prayer or something by Bon Jovi? I'm, yeah, no. I might okay. have just like watched in the background. <laughs> but, uh, I like Big Butts. <laughs> Chris, did you sing that one by Sir Mix-a-Lot? Definitely not. No, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but they were awesome. Yeah, great guys and great bands. You know, we, we, they, were, they seemed so professional compared to ourselves at the time. So I think we learned a lot. Certainly how to you know, open up a little bit more on stage. Both uh, Chili Peppers, Foo Fighters, and Muse have been so important to Coachella, like three huge bands playing the main stage, bringing people in from all over the world. And uh, I remember last time you guys played here, I was so excited. At the same time, I was frustrated because when it's a festival, by the time you go on, some people have had too much to drink, had something else. I'm like, will you please shut up? I'm trying to watch this thing. And I'm like, after the first song, I was like, eh, I give up. I give up. But how do you find, uh, is there any intimacy at all for you guys when you play to 80,000 to 100,000 people? Dominic? And how do you get the energy, or is it just easy because you're playing? Well, you get the energy from, from the audience, really. You know, it's, it's kind of the cheesy classic line, but, you know, the, you know, I think the band's energy makes the audience energetic and, and vice versa. Um, you know, 80,000 people is not particularly intimate. <laughs> but it can be. But uh, I, know, I personally find it more intimate than a, an arena, though. I mean, the arenas can be quite cold, you know, it's very dark. You can't see everybody. Yeah. I think with a festival, everyone's just there to have a good time, and you get you get that feeling when you're playing, you know. All right, I'm gonna ask two more things, then we'll let you go because the sun is beating down right on us right here. There's a song that uh, we're playing on K Rock now, um, and it's called "Magic" by Coldplay. When you hear that, are you like, "Wow, that's kind of like madness." <laughs> Oh, what to say? No, I mean, not, no, it's not a bad, not a knock. I'm just, it, kind, it reminds me a little bit of it. Uh, it, it, you can pass <laughs> like in Family Feud. You can be like, I pass Richard Dawson. You know, no, you know, it, it, it crossed my mind, but it's, it's <laughs> nothing like it. Do you know what I mean? It's a completely different song. Ma -ma 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 magic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, but it's a good track, you know? I think, you know, it's, uh, you're like completely electronic and um, different for them, but I think it's good. All right, I see you, you like winking it? through your Ray-Bans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like both songs. <laughs> By the way, so do you guys know that the song Madness was number one for 19 weeks in a row on the alternative U.S. chart? 19 weeks in a row. That is a record. And That's in the history of, of Muse, they've had so many songs that have been on the radio, so many great songs, even songs that I like more than Madness. And that's the one that stuck around. And ever, I mean, they all, they all stick around. But, man, what a huge song. Was that the uh, – when, when you made that song, did everyone in the studio say, like, oh, yeah, this is a record? I, well, yeah, we knew it was good. But to be honest, uh, I was, you know, in many ways surprised by how well it did, you know, because it got to, you know, in the alternative charts, whatever, it got to number one. And I was, I was like, okay, that's cool. That's great, and it just stuck around and didn't go anywhere for, right. for like 19 weeks, you know, which is mental. So I'm, I was totally surprised by how well it's done, for sure. And uh, but yeah, in the studio, we we kind of knew it was very different for the band, and we knew that we liked it. So we kind of thought we'd put that out first, which we thought was a bit of a risky move because it sounded so different and it wasn't particularly like heavy or rock or anything like that. But I guess it's uh, I guess it's done well, so it worked. <laughs> I like the voice. I love your voice when you sing. The songs are great that you sing. <laughs> Liquid State is so good. When you make a new record, are you going to sing some more as the lead? Oh, I, I don't know. I d I've not really worked out whether I like singing yet or okay. not. <laughs> you pulled it off great I, I at Staples know. Center. I was there at yeah, Staples Center. Yeah, I mean, some, some, sometimes, I, sometimes I love it. Sometimes I can't stand it. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just very borderline with it at the moment. So kind of like I, this I interview, know. right? <laughs> <laughs> This interview is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> except, except the guy asking the question. This is the very, very, very second to last question, I promise. 
<laughs> is it going to be in 2014 or 2015 when we get a whole bunch of new Muse songs? Um, it, like, we're going to start this year for sure. We're actually going to, we're going to, this is our, yeah. Uh, we're still listening. <laughs> this is our, la these are our last two gigs tomorrow and the next weekend. And then we're completely done for like touring this album. So we're going to go back in like May and kind of start working on some new stuff. So cool. I think we'll get around to recording it this year. If we can get something out this year, that'd be great. But definitely next year. All right, and if there's time, we have the band Emotional Beefcake still, right? Yes, okay. we can always do our side project, the okay. Emotional Beefcakes. We have the Emotional Beefcakes <laughs> band. We're in a band together. I've made T-shirts. Uh, we've never had a rehearsal. We haven't written any songs. And uh, We're going to send you some riffs, yeah, and you're going to... Please, and I'm going to put the lyrics yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you. I know it's such a busy day, and you're headlining, and you come over to the K-Rock house, and the relationship over the years. I know you guys are not from L.A., but you are an L.A. band for us, and... I'm so, I'm so fond and appreciative. Thank you so much, you guys. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, Chris and Dom, they are Muse. I'm Stryker at the K-Rock Coachella House, everybody. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>